hello everybody so today we have this ic7300 which is new to my bench um so i've got the uh ft710 which i was hugely impressed with the uh ftdx10 sitting up there and i thought you know what i'm gonna try one of these ic7300 so i went ahead and picked one up and it is a great radio um Right out of the gate, there's some things that I like better about the IC7300 versus the FTDX10 or 710. And uh, that would be one of the cool things that I like is the uh, SWR function to be able to check your SWR. That's really cool. I like that. Uh, super handy, especially since I'm using a tuner uh, on 80, me 80 meters. I can't seem to get this uh, N-Fed halfway that I'm using resonant on 80 meters. Every other band, it's not bad. I mean, I can do 160 with it. I can do 40 with it um, and on up, and it's not an issue. Um, I can use the uh, internal tuner of this uh, IC7300 or the FTDX10 or uh, FT710 with no problems at all. It's just the 80 meter band that I have to use an external tuner with. So this is, this is uh, having this feature is nice because once i switch over to using the external tuner um, i can just quickly go over here just to make sure everything still looks all right that's i really like that a lot as far as like the spectrum display um i think it's it's okay it but it doesn't hold a candle to the ftdx10 or the ft710 at all in my opinion and i have it running uh n1mm which is kind of neat uh, right now, we're just uh, running out of the back of the radio here into and my RF sampler into the bench. And I wanted to show you uh, what I found on with sideband output and third order intermodulation distortion. Uh, if you watched my previous videos, you know I'm a big stickler for lowest the lowest amount of intermodulation distortion uh, possible. And I think I'm pretty much happy with the settings that I picked with the 7300 here to get that. Now, what I will say about the 7300 is it, you know, the engineers that designed this uh, algorithm for um, the transmit output on sideband, I think, uh, hit the mark, whereas maybe Yesu didn't quite so much do that. You know, you, there's a lot of variance on a Yesu as far as the software settings where you can definitely uh, create a lot of intermodulation distortion depending on what settings, output settings for, you know, mic gain, speech, speech compressor, uh, bandwidth, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you could wildly swing out of that uh, sweet spot and start creating a lot of intermodulation distortion and not know it. Where this radio, it seems that that's not quite the case. So what, I'm, what I mean by that, for example, Right now, I got the uh, output power set at 80%. So, I, you know, I guess that just equates to 80 watts. And uh, I've got my mic gain set at 25%. I, I will typically run it at 50. And 50%, 100%, 15%. It doesn't really matter. And I'll show you here. So, basically, this is what I, I typically run. And we'll just key it up. We're running two tones at 30 millivolts into the radio um, not, two tones non-harmonically related and we'll look at it over here on the scope first and I, I made up a little adapter here so I could uh, do some external keying and tone input so we'll go ahead and key it up there you go we're keyed up and you see our waveform which looks pretty nice and we're running about average there that's on the 120 watt scale so what is that so we're running about 30 now about 25 watts average right now and then here is our spectrum and yes this is attenuated properly we're right at the top radical here where we want to be and we're uh we're reading through my attenuation that i've got coming into this input we're at minus 24 db right now at the signal and it's a very clean looking uh spectrum if you see that it's not bad at all okay so let me uh unkey the radio now i'm going to change the mic gain this is what this is what i mean by uh it seems that icom has really got this down pretty well as far as controlling into modulation distortion uh, even though you might be running something like mic gain really high so we're going to just set that at like 
90%. And we'll look at this again real quick here. 80% power, 90% mic gain. I'm going to key it up. There's our waveform. Still looks great. And there's our spectrum. Now this is 30 kilohertz wide here. 30 kilohertz. And it's, the spectrum still looks basically the exact same. Now if we peek left here, we're about 56. Peek back right. Oh, I messed up here. Peek back right. Oh, I had it. We're at 24. So I, what is that? About 35 dB, I guess. Let me unkey it again. Um, so it doesn't really matter where you put your mic in. We, we'll change that down to, say, 15%. And we'll just key it up one more time again. We'll just look at the spectrum analyzer. 24. Uh, we'll peak left. Same 50, 56, 57, 58. Same thing, basically. All right. Now, if I change... I'm going to put this back to 50%. If I change my speech compressor setting, which is supposed to change your average power output somewhat... Um, doesn't make any difference on the uh, on the intermodulation distortion. You saw it was pretty low there. We had about a 30, 35 dB. We'll t let's look at it one more time. I'm bad with math, especially on the fly. So what we got, so we're at 24, and we'll peak left at 58. So what is that, 24 minus 58, or I mean 58 minus 24. So that puts us at, now, yeah, yeah, it was close, 35, 34 dB, 35 dB. Okay, now, it also doesn't matter if we change our transmit bandwidth here to, we leave it on, I, I have it set on Y. Now, that was actually pretty surprising me. I figured that with it set on Y, that the intermodulation distortion in the third order would just be super high, and it's not. Uh, we, we can go to narrow, and... I haven't changed the settings uh, as far as um, how wide those are. So we'll go here. So narrow is just the standard. And e even if I wanted to change it, I couldn't make it any more narrow, I guess is my point. I, if I try to increase the low side, I can't. If I try to decrease the high side, I can't. So it's as narrow as it's going to get. And I've also messed around with um, changing the mids and the wides, or mid and the wide. It doesn't really make any difference on intermodulation distortion output in the third order. So those are all basically uh, standard. And right now we're on narrow. So we'll key it up again on narrow and look at it. Look here at the spec or the uh, oscilloscope first. So we're still at the 80 watts. Hasn't really changed at all over here. Still about minus 57 dB down to our first uh, peak of intermodulation distortion. So nothing's really changed between uh, wide and narrow. So they that, that's what I mean by it seems like they really have a good handle on controlling the intermodulation distortion. Now that being said, I'm running at 80 watts. So... My, I guess my, my biggest thing is is that according to part 97, which covers the amateur bands, if you're transmitting 30 megahertz or below your spurious emissions, which I would say uh, intermodulation distortion of any order is going to be considered a spurious emission, your spurious emissions have to be attenuated by f at least 43 dB for any transmitter made after, what is it, January 1st, 2003? And we are definitely not meeting that standard at all at 80 watts. So there we go again. You see, same thing. That's basically 35 dB off of the peak. And uh, so that does not meet part 97 standard. And if I drop power down to, let's say, 25%, so if we're going to be doing 25 watts, and I think part 97 basically says if it's a transmitter running at least 25 watts, uh, that, that would be the standard 43 dB attenuation for your spurious emissions. Um, so we'll, we'll key it up. Now we're going to change our, what it looks like on the, on the uh, oscilloscope here, because we're much lower in amplitude. 
and we've changed our spectrum here because we're lower so we'll go ahead and just uh let's see we'll set that at say there we go so we'll put it back up where we want it and uh let's see what is our peak here 30 db now is what our input looks like at the peak and see now it's saying no peak found so we've cleaned up that that little bit of intermodulation distortion that was there and now we're basically able to meet part 97. Um, see, now we're 70, basically. It's peaking it up on this side from 40. So it's just barely making the, the, the standard at 25 watts. So if we increase that to say, you know, like I said, back to say 50, um, I think... I think actually about 35 watts is about as high as we can really go with it before uh, we we lose that um, we don't we, we're not complying with part 97 anymore so let's see so now we're just a little bit over where we want to be on the peak and I'm not going to sit there and try to bother changing it right now on the fly 69 28 so but again about that same 40 DB so just barely just barely making that uh, part 97 standard. I mean, actually it's 3 dB off still, but uh, you see what I'm saying though. It's much closer to meeting that part 97 standard with the lower output power. And you know, maybe some people run it like that. Um, maybe they're running into an amplifier, uh, but you know, part 97 says if you, even if your amplifier has to meet that same spurious emissions standard. And I'm running uh, this typically at uh, 80%. Don't mind the dog in the background. She's a good yard dog. She barks a lot when she hears something. So anyway, um, yeah, so I just wanted to show that. I mean, it's, it's got a very clean output signal. I mean, like if you were use, if you were kind of basing this off the CB services, which is part 95, you're allowed a lot more leniency. You just have to be 25 dB down in attenuation for your spurious emissions within 8 kilohertz of the fundamental frequency. But... Part 97 for the amateur band uh, tightens up that standard considerably. And if you run your power basically over probably at the 40% mark or higher out of the radio, you're not going to meet that part 97. You're not even going to have a chance to meet it. But it's still very clean and it's very controlled no matter what settings you pick here as far as speech compressor mic gain or your transmit bandwidth. And I've also... Uh, messed around with, uh, let's see, the, uh, let me get back in here, I'll show you. I've also messed around with bass and treble settings as well. Bass makes no difference if I drop the bass down as low as I can get. I think it's minus five. Doesn't make any difference on the, the third order IMD at all. Um, treble, if I drop the uh, treble down to minus five, it'll just change the IMD uh, from one side of the of the sideband to the other doesn't really decrease it. It just changes where it's being emitted at. <clears throat> so those aren't really any help for for third order IMD at all. Um, doesn't really make any difference. But yeah, I mean I'm super impressed with with ICOM's ability to manage the IMD the third order IMD, even though you're wildly changing your, especially your, your power, your mic gain and your speech compressor, uh, it still maintains a very clean signal. And we'll look at it again one last time at uh, 80 watts. I'll key it up here. 80 watts, mic gain at 50%, speech compressor at five. Uh, very beautiful waveform, uh, very clean, but it's just not at that part 97 standard. Um, but still very clean. So, yeah, I just thought I'd show that. I'm really enjoying the radio. Um, like I said, uh, they ICOM does a much better job, in my opinion, of, of controlling third-order IMD versus Yesu and, and um, on, the, on the FT710 and the FTDX10. And not to say that the Yesu FT710 or the FTDX10 can't have a clean output, because they can. Uh, if you've watched, if you watch my other video on the FTDX10 and third order IMD, you'll see what I'm talking about. You just, you know, it's just not right out of the box setting wise. I had to experiment with it to get the cleanest output. 
uh, but this ICOM is much better at, at maintaining that third third order IMD level, no matter what you're doing with your basic user settings. So that that to me is pretty impressive. Um, I I think I'll get, eventually get a pan adapter for this. I just you know set it up with uh, N1MM to start off with a C. If I really wanted to invest another three hundred bucks in a pan adapter. And I think I do. I think I'll probably eventually uh, not be running N1 and M, and, but I'll get a pan adapter and and get a little bit more fancy up there on a monitor. But anyway, I I'll, I didn't want, want this to run on as long as it did, but it did. So uh, 73s to everybody, and we'll uh, see you next time.